Backwards viewers, Chef Kimberly with you again today. I have the brand ambassador, Chef Sharon, with me. Hi, welcome. Hi, Hi Kimberly. <laughs> Thanks for coming here. Yes, we are actually in Irvine, California at the Middle B showroom. And if you have not seen this amazing showroom, I totally recommend coming here. And you get to meet this wonderful person that I am Thank just you. enjoying cooking Thank with. You. We're so happy to have you here. Yes, I'm excited. So we have a special treat for you today. We are doing a holiday inspired menu, but it is all outdoors. So Chef Sharon, can you tell us what we're cooking on? Absolutely. We're going to cook on the Lynx flat top grill. We're going to cook on the Lynx regular grill and we're going to cook on the Lynx Napoli oven. Yes. Uh, and what we're going to get started with today is our lamb leg, which I think is a little twist on, you know, the traditional holiday. People just think like turkeys and ham. I think this is a nice little selection of meat. Um, and then with that, we're going to be doing a roasted honey nut squash um, couscous with a little bit of quinoa in there and other grains. So I'm going to go ahead and start chopping up some herbs. And if you would like to get the butternut squash ready for our couscous. Absolutely. We're going to be roasting that. Delicious. Yes. So with the sage, we're just going to chop it up nice and fine in rosemary. So it's like two to one ratio of ro uh, sage to rosemary. So I'll have, yeah, I'll watch you throw that in there. <laughs> um, so this slides right open. So this is like perfect to reach in there. You know what? I love that this slides out because sometimes when I'm using certain pizza ovens, if it's so hot in there, you're trying to get a pan in there, you're like burning, you're like scorching right. your hairs off right. your arm. And this is really nice too, is you can actually take the door off. Oh, wonderful. So, if you want to run a cooler oven or if you really need to get in there and be able to maneuver, it's nice that this removable yes. door comes right out. Oh my gosh, yes. All right, so what I did with this lamb is we marinated the day before. I put a little salt and pepper on there. Uh, I actually found this mustard. I love using mustard with lamb because I feel like it kind of cuts from the gaminess. So I found this Russian mustard. I had no idea what it was, but I was like, this sounds interesting, right? Um, and it was sweeter. We would yeah. say like a little sweeter than regular mustard. So I did a one to one ratio of the Russian mustard and then just like a regular um, stone ground mustard. That's all we did, just salt and pepper. And then now we're gonna get to take our herbs and we're just gonna cover it with it. Just give it like a nice herb crust. Yeah, that mustard was really tasty. I think I'll buy that. Russian yeah, it mustard. was really good. I was like, I don't know what, I was like, I don't know what this is, but sounds interesting. That's how you discover cool things. Yeah. It's just by trying it. Sometimes you just it. have to try it. Yep, can't be scared. <laughs> And I just trusted it a little bit with some butcher's twine because the bone felt like it was a little loose. So I don't want my bone to fall out while it's on the rotisserie. And then you don't want to waste anything. So I'm kind of just scooping this kind up. Of yeah. Okay. I love lamb. It's like one of my favorite <laughs> dishes. <laughs> Before I was a vegan, lamb chops. It was like your thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love lamb chops. <laughs> yeah, me too. So this, you're kind of gonna run it off to the side away from the bone, but not too close to the edge because then you don't want your lamp to fall off. <laughs> it's pretty easy to get through. I've actually had a harder time doing pineapple. <coughs> Maybe not. <laughs> oh my gosh, you just squirted at me. <laughs> No bell peppers. So it's about right there. And I'm just gonna push it towards the middle. So with this, um, I'm going to have the two side burners on. There's a total of three burners on the on the grill, right? It's a 30 inch grill. I'm gonna have the two side burners on and then I'm gonna have the infrared um, rotisserie burner on in the back as well. So I'm gonna go ahead. You're ready Do you to mind go in? opening that for me? Absolutely. Okay, so this goes right on this side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the middle one off. Okay, so now we have the infrared rotisserie burner on, and then I went ahead and put a little drip tray on the bottom just to catch all those juices. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And I want my oven to stay about 350 for the most part, um, and it's gonna take about 
40 minutes, depending what size lamb you have. Um, I always check it about 30 minutes to make sure that the internal temperature is about 135. I want it to be like a medium, you know, medium to medium rare. So we're going to let that lamb um, cook and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we're going to work on the couscous part of our dish. What I did is I had my pot here kind of preheating on the grill. I have it on uh, griddle. I have it on high. I'm going to take a little olive oil. Just pour that in there. Just a little bit. Then what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of oregano, kind of chop it up. So I'm just going to toss that in there. You can already hear that sizzle. Kind of just toasting it a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll take my stock. I'll wait for that to come to a boil or simmer. All right, and add a little pinch of salt. All right, so once that comes to simmer, I'm gonna go ahead and add my couscous and then cover it. And it should be about 20 minutes until it's done, right? Okay, so you think those veggies are ready to come out? I think the veggies yes. are absolutely ready to come out. <laughs> I could smell them from here, smell. like, oh, That's always squash. a sign when something's almost done is when you when smell it. You can it. smell it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then our water, oh, yeah. our broth has come to a boil. So when she gets those out, we're gonna let them cool down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my couscous. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful oh, that see is. See that nice roast? That's just so cute. <laughs> I can't get over them. I can't They're wait to so... buy these. They yeah, are right. Like individually stuffed, or like, like Hasselback. I was thinking like Hasselback, like, Hasselback like Hasselback style. with like a nice little crust on top. Maybe like a pecan crust that we're doing with the asparagus. Oh, That'd yeah. be nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. I'm gonna add my couscous. That couscous is really pretty. It is. I got this at Trader Joe's. They have like a bag of it. So just giving that a little stir. And I soaked it for a little bit, um, just cause some of those grains will take a little longer than the couscous. Go ahead and cover that and then just let it cook. Perfect. And then once those cool down, we're probably just gonna chop it up so we can add into it. Oh, we're gonna, gonna add this back in, it's gonna be great. And I can yeah. tell that this was done just by inserting a knife and see how tender it is. That was 15 minutes roasting. That is that so, is so fast. fast. Yes, I'm like, jinx, personal jinx. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so it's been about 20 minutes for our couscous mix. It's all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and go behind you and pull that. It, it smells, smells unbelievable. Right? Mm. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in a bowl while you go ahead and dice up that squash. I'm gonna dice up the squash. I'm gonna scoop this out of the skin. Oh, that just looks amazing. Right, in this black bowl, right? All these colors, all these fall colors in here. It's a little bit of brown, some red, orange, green. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt to this. Some pepper with my giant pepper shaker. I cannot wait to dive into this. <laughs> oh, here next to you just being a fool. I know, I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle a little bit of olive oil in here. It just can't hurt. Nope. This looks amazing. All right. If you don't tap your spoon hard, you're not doing it right. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this color on here. It's beautiful. Look at that. That is so beautiful. It smells delicious. I could like dip my head in here. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> All right, so now we just gotta wait for our lamb to be ready and we can plate this on a nice, beautiful platter as if you're serving Thanksgiving dinner, right? All right, so we just pulled out our lamb off of our rotisserie. It was at about 135 and then we let it rest and it's gonna come up to temp a little bit too. So depending how you like it, I always recommend taking out about five degrees at the temperature that you want it to be final. Look at this beautiful crust. Yeah, that crust is amazing. It's amazing. See, even our vegan chef agrees. It looks yeah. good, <laughs> right? <laughs> the crust looks amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this butcher's twine. Our couscous is ready. That's gonna go on the bottom of the dish and give it a nice little pop of color. So if you want to go you ahead and start, yeah, start doing that part while I do this. So you have two choices. You could carve into this or you could give this to one person. I don't know, it's up to you. <laughs> Look at that color. Oh, this just... The squash almost like kind of changed the color of the couscous. It really did. It screams fall. 
Nothing like that sound of spoon oh on my gosh, stone. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> nails on a chalkboard. All right, so this has rested. We're just gonna go ahead and place that on there on the plate. Chef Sharon's gonna add some beautiful herbs to that. Tuck some herbs in there. Because you eat with your eyes first. You do, right? I always say that. You eat with your eyes first. Look at that, looks amazing. Uh, if, I don't know, like nothing screams fall like this dish. Like <laughs> This looks amazing. I am so ready for the holidays. And I'm gonna make a grilled asparagus, mm -hmm. which is gonna be really a quick vegetable to do outdoors. And I'm gonna top this with a pecan and chitlapin chili crumble. Yes. With a little bit of pioncio or similar to a brown it. sugar for sweetness and a little lime juice for acidity. Mm -hmm. So what I have here is some fresh asparagus spears that I have blanched for two minutes. So I have the flat top grill heated up to a medium high heat. I'm gonna lay the asparagus on the hot grill. I don't have any seasoning on this yet. And do you need any oil for it or? We're gonna need okay. a little bit of oil, so I'm gonna get them laid down. Mm -hmm. I'll do about that much to start. And then I'm gonna just drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, not a lot. I want this to be a really light dish. Just enough to start get some get some browning on the asparagus. Mm -hmm. And while these grill, I'm gonna add just a pinch of kosher salt, just to lightly season. And then while these grill, I can also build my pecan sauce right outside. So I don't have to leave my asparagus. I don't necessarily have to have a burner. Yeah. I can have the flat top be my burner, be my yes. French top which we discovered today. It does boil. It will we, boil. Yeah. <laughs> it will boil. If you so. watch our other series of videos, you could catch our couscous dish that we that we did and we boiled it right on top of the griddle. It boiled right on top of the griddle. So what I have here are some roughly chopped pecans, mm -hmm. which is about one cup. And then the chitlapin chili is a Sonoran chili. Yeah, I was I I don't really know too much like Mexican food, um, and, but you have taught me a few things, yeah. already, you know, just today. That's like one of my favorite cuisines to yeah. cook is Mexican uh, cooking, and I'm a big chili head. <laughs> so these are very feisty chilies. So I'm just using about six chilies okay, for yeah. one and a half bunches. So they're okay. really tiny. They kind of pack a punch. And we tasted them. We tasted this dish last week, and just with those six, you really could get that, like, kind of that back end. Yeah, you know, that that fire. back end <laughs> fire. So, I'm just chopping these up a little bit fine because mm -hmm. you don't want a big hit of this chili in your mouth. So, with your knife, you could certainly use your mortar and pestle to crush them up. Oh yeah. So are these dried chilies. They're dried chilies, They're correct? Dried mm -hmm. chilies. Everyone in Sonora tends to have a chitlapin chili bush oh, really? in their house. So I tried to grow one this year, but I didn't have very good luck with a lot of my <laughs> chilies this year, but I wasn't home a lot this summer, so everything got a little bit neglected. Really neglected. Well, at least you start a garden. I kill all my plants. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't even keep a, a succulent alive, and that's the easiest <laughs> one. <laughs> that's great. So in here, I have two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of olive oil, mm -hmm. so equal parts, with my one cup of pecans, my six finely chopped chitlapin chilies, and a good pinch of salt, which is already in here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna add a, the little bit of pioncio would uh -huh. be about equivalent to like two tablespoons of brown sugar. If you don't have pioncio, you, you could certainly use, could yeah. use brown sugar. It's gonna have that same mapley flavor. Yeah. You could use maple syrup. You could also use honey, but sometimes I feel like honey or maple is a little bit high on the saccharin for me. It yeah. just is so aggressively sweet. And I just want and they that. feel like it overpowers it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like this gives it like almost like an earthy kind of very yeah. much earthy. So I would cut off just about you know a two inch piece, chop it up, and I've already added that in as well. 
-hmm. And then I'm going to turn our asparagus because I can hear it sizzling away, which means I know there's some browning. Give everybody a roll around. <laughs> this is nice to do instead of a grill because then you are not losing any asparagus in your grill. You're kind of just, you're just still getting that really nice color with, without sacrificing without any asparagus. Sacrificing. <laughs> but isn't that true? How many times have we like oh my grilled gosh. on an open grill and even though you're going in the opposite direction. I always lose them. Yeah. Especially if we're trying to flip it like that, I would have lost like 10 already. Somebody wants overboard. Beans. Yes. <laughs> And then to finish the pecan crumble, it's just, I'm gonna give it just a squeeze of a half of a lime. Mm -hmm. If you don't have lime, certainly you could use a lemon, lemon, but a lime is gonna give it that, like just that little hit of acid. So we got all of it. We, we have that of fat, heat, uh, salt, acidity, sweet. salt, yeah, sweet. My kind of dish, very balanced. So if you have like picky vegetable eaters, this is kind of a nice way to get them to eat vegetables. It's a little sweet, a little spicy. <laughs> Perfect for the holidays and you have a bunch of different crowds in, right? Absolutely. Our asparagus is ready to. They come look off ready the to me. <laughs> Doesn't that look good? Yes, it does. I really feel like the blanching um, made a big difference. If you were to just do it from raw, it's not on there for a very long time, right? So I feel like that blanching kind of helps them hold their color. We're still getting that caramelization, and it's going to make them just a little bit more tender. Mm -hmm. I love asparagus. <laughs> I do my best to artfully play. Yeah. <laughs> just imagine where it's Thanksgiving Day. You're just prepping all these meals for all your family and friends. And I, I trust that these would actually taste pretty good room temperature as well. Yeah. But I like to start out serving warm. You know, when you're the chef or the cook, you tend to be one of the last people to eat. Oh yeah. <laughs> or you, you, by the time you sit down, you're already full because you've been trying everything the entire time. I can tell you how many times I'm like, oh, I'm, I don't even want to look at it anymore. I've been cooking all day. I don't want to look at food anymore. Absolutely. So here we have our pecan chitla pin chili crumble. Mm, so nice. I love the colors. It, it's beautiful. Isn't it nice? I like that the, you would think because of the sugar that it would come like almost, it would be like stuck together, but the pecans are still pretty separated mm -hmm. and it's like enough to kind of crumble all around. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like a brittle or anything, mm -hmm. right? That looks amazing. Isn't that good? Yes, there we go. I'm so excited. Okay, so I, I was so excited to see this on the griddle. I love seeing different things. I think people always think breakfast, right? But you could actually do veggies on here with a nice pecan crumble. So thank you for sharing this recipe with You're us. Welcome. We're going to be using the Napoli oven, which is not just a pizza oven. It's an oven that you could bake in, grill yes. in, roast in. So it's very, very versatile. Yes. So I have the Napoli oven at about 350 degrees, which is your standard baking. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do a very uh, quick and easy blueberry galette. And if you know what a galette is, you'll know that it's puff pastry that's just sort of a rough fold. Mm -hmm. So if you struggle with making pie crust, which so many people do, yes. and it gives people anxiety, it does. the answer to that is a rustic galette. So you can buy your puff pastry already done, keep it nice and chilled. I'm going to use the fresh uh, blueberries. You certainly can use frozen blueberries, but fresh blueberries either way mm -hmm. and one of the techniques that I use to sort of ensure that I have a thick enough jellified filling when yes. I make pie because that's always like the, the, the kind of like, yeah the risk the part of the anxiety right is like right? is it going to set am is I gonna cut gonna into set? this and it's just gonna fall over the place yeah is it gonna be like a runny mess or yes. is it gonna be like a goopy gelatinous yes beautiful delicious right <laughs> all the words yes so what I do is 
I'm gonna take, and I have some pre-measured ingredients. And we're gonna post a recipe, correct? Yes, There yes. will be a recipe. There will okay. be a recipe. So I have a half a cup of flour. I have three quarters of a cup of sugar. Um, in, my, in your saucepan, you're gonna add your three quarters of a cup of sugar, which is half the sugar that we're gonna use total, mm -hmm. and half the blueberries that we're using total. I have my berries coated in sugar. I'm gonna add the juice of a lemon or excuse me, the juice of half of a lemon, which is about a tablespoon and a half of juice. And then when you're baking, and especially when you're baking sweets, you always wanna use just like a pinch of salt that helps mm -hmm. to bring out the sweetness, mm -hmm. right? That's a really beautiful color already. I know, isn't that a pretty <laughs> color? And then I like cinnamon in most of my pies. I'm gonna just do a rough measure of a half of a teaspoon, a teaspoon of vanilla. Now I'm gonna cook this down just mm -hmm. like I did here. You can just see how how it's kind of thick and goopy. Yes. And as it cooks down for 10 minutes on low heat, and I could I did this here earlier, or over a flame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have a burner, a link side burner, you can use that or use it right on top of your griddle. That's so right. So you can technically do all of this outside. You can do everything <laughs> outside. Yeah. So this was cooked down for 10 minutes. And after that 10 minutes is when I'm gonna fold in the rest of the blueberries and the flour. Okay. So I'm gonna coat these berries in the flour, toss it in, toss it together. And then you're looking for and consistency. I'm, for there. consistency. And then here's that other three quarters cup of sugar. I almost forgot that part <laughs> of me. It's my stage fright. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes I always do that too. Like, yeah. oh. or, I've, or like if I'm doing events or something and I plan on putting something on a plate and I'm so busy, sometimes I just forget. <laughs> right? Like, what am I missing Yeah, here? I'm missing something. That's so, okay. We're only human. <laughs> exactly. So the rest of the berries is now tossed with the rest of the, the second portion of sugar and the flour. Mm -hmm. That's going to get added to the saucepan and finished for another 10 minutes of cooking. And that's where I have that nice, thick, gelatinous mixture that I yeah. know is going to set up in the galette. Yes. So I'll typically chill this down for a couple of hours before I start the galette. Yes. And this has yes. been chilling for at least an hour. So I think we're good, we're to, good go. to go. I'll set this to the side. And this is where you can see like it takes pie baking to its like next level is there's no stress. And this is what makes it like nice and easy is I'm just going to do a fold and a fold and a fold and a fold and a fold. I love glitz. I love the rustic look. I and one more fold. And that is so rustic. Now, I personally love texture, so I want to have some of that crunchy sugar on the okay, top. Okay, yeah, me too. Yeah, more sugar, the better. Like <laughs> yeah. Crunchy extra. Mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of an egg wash. And this is one egg beaten with one tablespoon of heavy cream. This is optional, but this will make the top of the galette a little shiny mm -hmm. and it'll also help that crunchy sugar that I like on the top to kind of stick to, to it stick right stick to it so it's now brushed with that little bit of an egg wash and then I have some if you don't have sanding sugar which I don't always have sanding sugar and that's the really uh, chunky white mm -hmm. clear crystals sometimes. that you'll see like on danishes and things on like danishes, that yeah. yeah sometimes at a cake decorating store which i never get around to getting to <laughs> but it's sometimes hard to find so i'll use the sugar in the raw mm -hmm. and it has just a little bit of the molasses left in the sugar but not much but it has that crunchy kind of the thick coarse yeah. sugar that we're looking for right yeah that coarse texture that i just like that extra crunch so this is going to go right into the Napoli oven and I'm going to bake this on the floor of the oven. Yeah, so you don't have to use a tray. You could bake it directly on the floor of the oven and that is also going to help it have that really nice crust on the bottom. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to see if I can just lift this in. So it's good to have your puff pastry nice and cold, right? Yes, yes. you want to keep all your ingredients really cold so it'll keep its shape and form as long as possible. Okay. So let's go in. I'm excited for this. I love dessert. <laughs> and I'm going to take the door off the Napoli just to make it a little easier to handle. And 
right there. And I want to maintain my heat. So I'm going to go back on with the door. Okay, so we're looking for about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, yeah, we want that filling to get nice and cooked, and the more it cooks, the thicker it will get, correct? Yeah. Then you want that nice browning on the bottom, on the top. Okay, guys, I pulled the galette out of our Napoli oven, and look at this. I mean, it popped up so high. It did. I think yeah. I'm in love. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just beautiful. And then the caramelized sugar on that the top. That just looks amazing. And yeah. as this cools, I don't know if you can see the steam, but it's it is. Yeah, it is coming out. It's like a little volcano. It is. You wouldn't want to cut into this now. You're going to want to wait a while, like at least yes. an hour. Yeah, you want to let it set a little bit, because even if it, it is pretty much set right now, but since it is hot, you will have some of that liquid running out. But if you let it just kind of sit at room temperature for an hour, you're going to have that really nice solid kind of when you cut into a gelatinous look to it. And this, I mean, this, I've never seen puff pastry puff up like this. Right, I, that I think high? it was the oven. I think it is the oven, because in the traditional oven, it does never puffs up this no. high. So we're pretty impressed with this. We're going to see how it tastes later. I'm sure it tastes delicious. When it's cool. <laughs> and again, letting your pies and your galettes mm. and your tarts at least cool for one hour to set up. If you mm. cut into a pie when it's warm, It'll, it'll Just, actually never set up. Even the rest oh. of the pie won't set. You'll break that bond. It's kind oh, of a weird wow. thing. Wow, that's, that's so. interesting. I didn't even, I learned something new today. Yeah. Look at that, that's cool. <laughs> so in an hour at least. So yeah, and then we're gonna top it with a little. The top. Yeah, I think I'd like so. I'd the honors. Thank you. This is gonna be so nice. And then what we're gonna do once it's cooled down, we're gonna cut into it and we're gonna head and top it with some vanilla ice cream because why not, right? Why not have, add some vanilla ice cream? A warm galette with berries. Amazing, yes, and vanilla and ice cream. cream. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the most excited for this dish. Like, me I'm ready to, to jump in. If Chef wasn't here to stop me, I probably would have cut right. into it already <laughs> and taken a bite. <laughs> All right, so for our viewers, if you'd like to see more videos like this in our holiday series and our Lynx Outdoor Kitchen, please visit our YouTube channel or go to perch.com to find the showroom nearest you. Chef Sharon, thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you, Chef Kim. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Yes, and please come stop by and visit, visit you, right? They could come on by and check out the showroom. Absolutely. Please come by Middleby Showroom in Irvine, California. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you.